What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn about the python.env module or package, which allows us to load key value pairs from a file and set them as environment variables, which is the best practice way to handle uh, configurations and especially sensitive information like API keys and passwords. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn about the python-.env package in this video today. I just recently made a video where I used this package where I showed you guys how to properly store, manage and load API keys in Python. Now you don't have to watch that video as a prerequisite here. Uh, I'm just mentioning this on the side. The proper way, the professional way to do that we learned was to use environment variables. So if you want to store a secret key, some authentication key, some credentials, uh, the professional way, quote unquote, is to do that with environment variables. And you can load dot and files into your environment, uh, or also just as configuration dictionaries using this package. And we're going to talk a little bit more about some specifics here today. So what we want to do first is you want to open up your command line and you want to say pip install python dash dot env. And then basically, we're going to just use two functions here from this package. And those two functions are going to be the load.env function and the .env values function. So we're going to say here from .env import load.env and .env values. And the difference here is just that uh, we're using the .env file and we're either loading the key value pairs as environment variables for this particular run now, uh, or we're loading them as a dictionary. So uh, depending on the use case, this makes uh, sense. So one or the other makes more sense. Uh, now, when you go to the package page, so when you go to the PyPI or PyPy org page, um, you can see here that they basically say it's a package that reads key value pairs from a dot n file, it helps in the development of applications following the 12 factor principles, then you can click on that. And you can see here that one of them is uh, config. Uh, so one of the factors is config, store config in the environment. So this is basically what they're referring to. Uh, at least that's what, what I assume. And um, yeah, so basically, you have a simple dot n file here, we're going to create this here dot env. And here now we can store all sorts of key value pairs. So what we did in the one video, and again, it's not a prerequisite, I'm just mentioning it for the people that saw it, uh, is we had something like my secret key is and then something some authentication key to some application or service. Um, and then what you can do is you can just go into your Python file, you can say load.env. And then you can use the OS module, which is the core Python module to do something with it. In this case, we can say of get env and then just my secret key. And then you're going to get this here. Now, the good thing is that you can commit the whole code base, of course, you should always add this dot uh, n file if it has sensitive information to the git ignore. So you should never commit it to the repository. Um, but essentially, what you can do is you can just have the same application and all the person that wants to run this script has to do is, is they have to create this dot n file, they have to specify uh, all sorts of keys, configurations and stuff like that. And then they can just run the script with the environment variables here, or using the environment variables here. Um, but what we can also do is we can um, do some more complicated stuff. I mean, it's not really complicated, but some more, uh, more advanced stuff, maybe. So for example, we can say here we have a host and the host is going to be localhost in this case, and we're going to have a port, which is going to be let's say 9999. And then we can say combined, if you want to call it that is equal to and then we can now refer to the variables we already have here in the environment, uh, we can say that the combination is dollar, and then curly brackets inside of this, we're going to say host, then colon, and then again, dollar curly brackets port. So that would also be some something that we can do. So I can print now os dot get env combined. And then we get this combination result here. And we can do that with different things. So for example, I could say also the mail is office at dollar 
host, or maybe you would want to use a domain for this. Um, but the basic idea is that if you have, for example, some domain, some host, some, some identifier here, and all these other values depend on it, you can also in the environment variable file, in the dot n file, you can also just refer to it so that you have to change it only once. So right now, if I print mail, we can see I get office at localhost, but I can also, of course, change this to neural9.com, for example. And then you can see office at neural9.com. And this mail does not exist, by the way, so you don't have to send messages to it. Um, so that is the, the way to just load everything into the environment. Now, I also mentioned this in the other video already. You can now override environment variables that already exist, or you can just... Um, prefer them. So if you have, for example, if I have on my system, some key called my key, uh, and I have also my key in the environment file in the dot n file, it's going to keep the environment variable from my system. However, if I say override equals true, it's going to override the system uh, environment variable, and it's going to prefer the one that I specify in the file. So this is just an important keyword here. Um, and now to the other function, um, you can also load all of this not as an environment variable, if you don't want to, you can also load this as a dictionary. So for example, we can say here, let's delete all this config equals dot nf values and then dot nf the file. And then we can just print the config here. So you can see I have an ordered dictionary with my secret key host port and stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, I can also access individual keys, for example, my secret key. There you go. But again, we don't have to commit the file, we can just commit the code and the people have then to create their own environment file, or you can somehow give it to them in a secure way offline or something on a flash drive and then delete it from the flash drive and then they only have it uh, on their system. The important thing is that you don't commit a file, uh, you don't publish a file where you have sensitive information, right? Um, and now finally, what I want to show you here is some advanced way to and this is actually taken here from the documentation page or from the from the package page here, uh, is you can also have different environment files, this is a use case, maybe if you want to publish one of the files, and the other one has sensitive information, so you don't want to publish it. Uh, what you can do is you can create a dot nf dot shared is what they call it on the package page. And then you can also create a not a Python file, actually, just a file dot nf dot secret. And then we can take, for example, the secret key, and we can paste it into the secret file here. And then we can take all of this information and we can paste it into the shared file. Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to create a convec file based on that. So we can say that we want to have a dictionary. And what we want to do is we want to say dot nf values from dot nf shared. Now, since this in and of itself is a dictionary, and we want to pass it into the dictionary that we already have, we need to unpack the values using these two uh, stars here, we're going to do the same thing for the secret file. So basically, we're now loading all the environment uh, variables here, or we're loading all the files from the dot and uh, all the values, all the key value pairs from the dot n file. And then optionally, what you can do is you can also say, unpack os dot which is going to give you the environment variables from the system. Now, in my case, I'm not going to do this here, because I don't want to show all my environment variables. But if I run this now, and if I just run config, you can see that we still have all of the information here. And this is also the case if I delete the environment file. And the idea now would be to do it professionally it would be to share the environment shared file and to keep the secret file secret so that only the people that know the actual key can uh, access this attribute, but you can just publish this if it's not containing sensitive information. So this is a package that is, um, I, I would recommend using this if you are working with API keys or something, because as you can see here, uh, as I already showed you, when you go to 12 factor, you go to config, uh, it mentions here specifically that credentials to external services, uh, and stuff like that should be stored in environment variables. And of course, you want to stick to a best practice, uh, to the best practice guidelines. And this is a package that allows you to do that.
So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.